Hey everybody, it's Moonbow here, and welcome back to more Endless Scrap Mechanic. In today's video, I am going to be showing you a really awesome build that uses these gears that you see here behind me. Now, these gears are part of the ACL Gears mod, which is available on the Steam Workshop. Now, I'm going to leave a link down in the description to this gear mod, and so I think it is time for another viewer challenge. Now, the last time we did a viewer challenge would have been the doors. Now, I made 10 door designs. I asked everybody to make door designs as well. I showcased a lot of doors. Now, in case you guys missed any of those door videos, there's going to be links up into the top right corner there. Uh, so this is going to be a lot like that. So what I want from you guys is to use these gears that you see behind me to create an awesome gear creation. All right, so now that we've got that out of the way, it is time to have some fun with gears. Now, I am really excited to see what you guys submit. Now, before we check out the awesome gear-powered system, I just wanted to show you a couple little tests that I was doing with these gears. Now, they are a lot of fun. You can see here I have a little switch set up to a gear. Uh, so there are two different sized gears. Now, there's one thing I really wanted to try and do. Now, there's probably going to be some of you that are going to try this as well. If you do the challenge, I tried to make a an elevator style system. Now, unfortunately, it would seem that with these gears, uh, there are no track gear teeth systems whatsoever. So you can see I ended up using the individual gear parts from the gear. Now that actually reminds me, if you get this mod, you have to download the mod and then get the parts themselves. So normally you might think, oh, the gears are going to be somewhere inside of my inventory. I can maybe type gear and find it that way, but you're not going to find the complete gear. As you can see here, there are a whole bunch of parts uh, but it is not advised to do that now what you actually end up doing is getting the mod and then you actually get creations on the workshop and so you can see here in my lift I have the large cog gear right there and then I also have the small one so when you are building with these gears though the easiest thing to do is to just spawn in a whole bunch of them just like so now if you wanted to use the large ones of course you would spawn in the large ones and then you pretty much just weld them to bearings it's it's really easy uh, and there's a couple tricks I'm gonna show you as well now as for the elevator though this is what it looks like I was trying to do something like this where I had the gears synced up on an electric motor uh, but you can see it's it's not really fast it, it's kind of wobbly as well and if I increase the speed then it really doesn't work at all but I mean that is still something though I mean it, it did work as an elevator and like I said I'm, I'm really curious to see uh, what crazy gear contraptions you guys come up with now if you guys are going to be checking out these gears here is a quick tip for you uh, just to make it a little bit easier now the easiest thing you're gonna want to do though is put a bearing down just like so, and then weld your first gear to a bearing. Uh, so now we have the option, of course, of using a small gear again. I've also taken the liberty of spawning in some larger ones here. Uh, but now if you try and put the gear into a position that works very uh, efficiently, you can see that it turns red and I can't put it there anymore. Now, a quick tip for you guys, though, is uh, when you do have your gear selected and you find the exact same spot where you want it to go, then quickly switch to your bearing, put a bearing down, and then get an actual engine placed here for the first gear. And so now what you can do is you can turn some power on to that first little gear right there. And now we can take one of the large ones and we're gonna be able to see now it turns red, uh, but then you'll get these moments where the gear is actually accessible. Uh, so you just wait for it to turn white and then you click just like so. And there we go. So now we have the small gear into the large gear. And of course that is something that you can repeat as much as you need to right there. You can see uh, this one fits right there. So we're gonna put a bearing like so. We'll grab another large one and we're gonna wait and there it is. Okay, perfect. Uh, so now we have the small gear powering the large one to another large one. Now I have found that you can also use gears up on the corner sides as well. Now this is kind of where it does start to get a little weird because you get kind of too close to the creation at some point. But we can see here, uh, we can put a small gear just like so. Uh, now this is obviously really, really close, but the gears, uh, they still seem to work pretty well. Now we're going to do one final gear though here. I'm going to try and put a large one. Okay, so we're going to put one right there, pop a bearing down, grab another gear and wait for it. There we go. All right, so there we go. As you can see, we've got these gears all turning in a sequence. Now we can increase 
the power of the electric engine, just like so. And there we go. We've got a crazy gear contraption. But now that we know what the gears are all about and what they look like, we are going to head over here now and we are going to see the gear powered drive system. Now, the gear system was a very fun thing to build. Now, I do have to put a disclaimer, guys. This has nothing to do with actual auto mechanic stuff at all. This is nothing about realism. This is just using the gears in Scrap Mechanic to have some fun and try something a little creative and different. Now, how this gear engine works is really cool, though. Uh, you can see here on the front, we have four different bearings that are being powered. Now, this isn't some type of piston engine or anything crazy like that. These are just the gears being spun by motors. Now, from left to right, though, we have the reverse gear, which is the gear that's all the way in the back there spinning. And then right here, we have three different gears that are spinning at different speeds. And that is, of course, because from left to right, we have the first, second, and third gear. And then right here, this gear setup is our drive system. Now, the way the drive system works, though, is it has a huge crankshaft on it, and it's going to go all the way back here to our first universal ball joint. So we've got a ball joint here that is going to free spin, and I do have a piece of suspension here that I'm going to explain in a moment, uh, which then continues on past the back here into the actual drive system again for the rear wheels. So these two sets of ball joints allow for the free movement of the drive gear right here at the front. Now, one issue that I did have with this mechanism was that while this whole thing pivoted from side to side so that each gear was accessible by that drive gear, uh, I noticed that it was actually being pulled away uh, because of the pivot point back there. So when it came out this way, it had an angular shift and it actually ended up being too far from the gears. So what I ended up adding was a piston right here that is connected to a smart engine. And so the smart engine has the power power set to zero. So this piston actually ends up acting more like a slip joint, which allows this entire thing to expand. So basically, it's like the opposite of the suspension here that compresses. Instead, it actually makes the entire drive shaft longer. So when it does come to vehicles, though, I gotta say this is probably some of the most fun that I've ever had. But let me show you how it all works together. So over here, I have a copy of the build welded off the ground so we can get a better look at all of the different gear systems and how it looks while it's in action. So uh, there's a few different buttons though. The number one key is our clutch. Now this obviously has nothing to do with a real clutch, but this is essentially the button that you can press to pull the gear mechanism away. Now that is actually why that suspension in the back is there. You can see when I press the one key, that suspension compresses. So I needed to be able to compress the entire drive shaft uh, to be able to pull the gear away from the gearbox. Now, using this isn't actually necessary when changing the gears. Uh, it does do a pretty good job of transitioning between uh, the first, second, and third gear. But now here is a wonderful view of the gears in action. So the five key, which looks like a handbrake in your toolbar, is the reverse switch. So if I press that, you can see that it pulls the gear in. And there we go. We now have both of those gears interacting. And then the, uh, the power gets transferred from one direction to another which then starts turning the drive shaft. So here is a view of the first ball joint right here that spins nice and freely. And then back here, it keeps extending to the secondary ball joint. And then after the ball joint, the power gets converted another time. And then this time, that is the actual drive function. Now, like I mentioned, this is reverse. So you can see these wheels in the back here, they are spinning in reverse. Now, all we have to do to get out of that, of course, is we can press the five key. Uh, so, like I said, the clutch isn't necessary, but it's kind of a fun thing to have. So you can actually press the clutch, put the gear over, and then drop it in place like so, and then you get your reverse. Uh, now, going in the other direction, of course, we can press 5 again to go back into neutral. And then once we press 2, there we go, you can see the gear gets extended to the first gear position. And then, of course, we do have the drivetrain all working in the opposite direction of reverse. And then we have our wheels giving us forward movement. But now this is where it gets fun. So from the first gear, we can move up to the 
second gear. And look at that. We are generating way more rotational speed now. Uh, now, it, it might look like it's really fast, but in the end, when you're actually on the road, uh, it doesn't really look that crazy. Uh, now, I probably could have used the bigger gears, but I feel like the bigger gears... Um, they they were would have taken up way more space. Now this already feels big enough as it is. Now of course though coming out of second gear we can move it into the third gear which is definitely the fastest gear. Now obviously I wasn't using the clutch during any of those gear transitions and you can see actually as I rotate through them uh, there isn't really too much of an issue but like I said if you want to get some more realism you can pull the clutch out and once you actually pull the clutch out you can see that the wheels do keep spinning a little bit longer and that is really cool because you can pull the clutch out move it into the next gear and you do get a little bit more of a seamless transition between those speeds so that is how you use the drive system and a nice close-up look of all the gears being operational now over here you can see this is actually just the drive system totally removed and I I know it's not like a real vehicle thing, uh, but just the fact that you can remove it from the car, you can actually look at it separate, it just adds a whole new layer of detailing work on vehicles. And speaking of vehicles, I did use that drive system to create a truck here. Now this is like an old school military looking truck and it actually has the gear system underneath with the drive shaft going to the rear wheels. Now if you guys do want to have some fun building your own vehicle is using this very same gear engine. I'm going to share it right now. I'm going to put it up on the Steam Workshop. There's going to be a link in the description for it if you guys do want to have some fun with that. Now, I do have to give you a fair warning though. When you are building with it, I 100% I suggest that when you're building, you use the Ultra Light Polygon Mod Pack, guys. It's going to be really important that you use that if you're going to be using this gear system because otherwise, too much weight, the gears won't work properly whatsoever. And you might actually notice that the wheels are relatively small as well, and that is because the bigger the wheel, the less power I got. Now, if I go up one wheel size, I literally lose all my power and the car can barely go forward anymore and what happens is that these gears they start to skip now that is where the larger gears probably would have worked way better uh, but like I said before the sizing just works better with the smaller gears and I think it's a little more compact but now let's hop into the driver's seat right here. Now I went with uh, a, a pretty cool control scheme. Now just like on the loose frame that I have over there, I have the buttons and switches, but now they're set up in an actual driver's seat configuration. So the cool thing about this though is as I'm pressing the clutch right there, if I go underneath the vehicle, you can see that I'm actually activating the clutch on the gear system. So now on the truck build though, I do have to start the engine, so I'm gonna press six. There we go, we've got the gears spinning. Now I guess the only thing left to do is to put it into drive. So here we go. We're going to move it over to the first gear. There we go. The gears are spinning and there we go. We are now getting some forward movement. Now obviously first gear Look at this. It's really, really slow. Normally, you would probably just go into first gear for a quick moment, and then you press three, and then we move the gearbox over one more, and there it goes. Once it gets seated in nice and smooth, you can see we start gaining a decent amount of speed. So here we go. We are now driving around in our old school military truck. We can see underneath it there we've got the drive shaft with those universal ball joints working like a charm. Now we can step it up a notch into the fourth gear. Here we go. Okay, now you can see the thing is bouncing around like crazy but eventually it'll settle down there we go it settles down and now we have our third gear speed and this is actually pretty zippy you know we can actually gain a decent amount of speed in this gear right here now driving around in only the frame and the drive system I think this looks absolutely awesome and just knowing that it is underneath the truck is something that's just so cool it, it adds so much detail I find to something like a truck build so yeah, here we are in a terrain world. Now, I just spawned this on the lift, and I just had to take a moment to look at how cool this looks with the gear drive system underneath the truck. But now it is time for some off-road driving with the gear system. Now, like I said, guys, it is not the fastest mode of transportation, nor is it very reliable at all, but I gotta say, 
It's probably some of the most fun driving I've had in this game. So here we go. We are now in first gear. There's the drive shaft moving our back wheels. We're kind of slowly moving along here. Now, of course, we're going to want to speed it up a bit. So let's drop it up a gear. Okay, there we go. Now we are moving a little bit faster. Now, I think we should be able to get away with our fourth gear, our fastest gear. Let's see here. Okay, there we go. All right, so now we are moving along with our gear-operated engine. Let's see if we can't maybe take a little bit of a hill. Now, like I mentioned, though, the drive shaft bottoms out a lot. But look at that. That was a lot of power to go over that little hill. Now, I know these aren't really large hills, but let's see if we're going to bottom out on this one. Oh, almost. You can see, okay, there we go. That is a little bit of a problem here. So every now and then... You can see that we don't have any drive happening on our front wheels or these middle wheels right here. Uh, so if you don't have any drive on those wheels, of course, you're probably going to get stuck. All right, there we go. I've just slowly moved myself over. Now we can start driving again. So I think when you're in first gear, it's the slowest speed, but I also think it's one of the most reliable in terms of the gears not slipping or not grinding whatsoever. Now, it is actually pretty funny. If you do go kind of fast and then change gears, you do get a lot of gear grinding. So it does kind of pay to have a smooth transition between different speeds here. Uh, but you can see if I just go uh, from, let's say, I think this is uh, third gear here. Okay, hold on. Don't run into anything. Uh, we're going to go from third gear all the way down to reverse really fast. So let's try that right there like that. And yeah, look at this. So you can see that the gear is actually totally locked up and I can't reverse whatsoever. So now maybe as a final test, I can see a really awesome off-road kind of section right there that doesn't look too difficult for this truck. So we're gonna step this up into second gear. Now let's see if we can't maneuver our way through this desert canyon section right here. Now it's kind of annoying because as I'm driving, I can't help but want to look at that drive system underneath the truck, uh, but then I can't see where I'm going. So uh, that's a bit of a problem with this build is the fact that all the cool stuff is hidden. Okay, there we go. We can actually straighten out right here. Now let's see. Okay, we're going up a hill right here. That's pretty smooth. Cruising along now. Oh man, okay, there's a nice view of the drive shaft actually with the two ball joints. Now hopefully we don't bottom out right here. Oh, nice smooth turn. Look at that, there's the drive system in the back. Now actually this is, this is a really cool view. I wonder if I can turn on strict follow cam right here like this. Oh yeah, look at that. So now I can actually drive while seeing everything underneath the car. Man, this is so neat. Okay, hold on, no, I'm stuck. Now that would be why I'm stuck. I didn't realize that there was a cliff right here. Now we were actually driving along pretty good and I would have to say that is the best view while driving this truck. So guys, that is going to be the video for today. I really look forward to seeing what creations you guys are going to be making with these gear systems. Now, like I said, it can be whatever you want it to be. It doesn't have to be a car like this. Uh, you can get as creative as you want. Uh, like I said as well, this build is going to be available on the Steam Workshop if you want to create your own gear-driven vehicle or if you just want to check out this truck as well. Uh, so guys, thank you so much for tuning in to the video here. Oh boy. Uh, if you guys did enjoy this build or the video, then let me know by hitting that like button. And if you guys do want to tune in for some more Endless Scrap Mechanic, then be sure to subscribe to the channel and maybe even turn on some notifications so you can get the latest and the craziest coming from me in Scrap Mechanic. So guys, thank you so much for watching, and I guess I'll see you in the next one, so bye for now.